All right, guys, welcome back into Indie D and D. Today we are joined by two Atlanta artists, Zay Because and A G Dynasty. Boys, how are we feeling today? Man, I'm feeling good. Feeling good. <laughs> Exciting. Appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. definitely, man. We uh, we appreciate y'all for having us on your platform. Um, definitely, just been a it's been a it's been a long day, but it's just busy. It's been it's been good though. Awesome, awesome, guys. Well. You know, I, I want to jump right into it. You know, you guys are two separate projects, but you get you you did do a project together. Um, yes, sir. So let's let's talk a little bit. March Madness. I mean, we're in the middle of it right now. Uh, you know, we're about to go into the sweet sweet sixteen week. Uh, so talk to us about that project, and you know, you guys. You know, a little bit about you know you guys working together. Um, and if you guys want to start, Jose, if you want to start with us, that'd be awesome. Got you, got you. So, um been working with AG for about, I want to say four or five years now, just um, coming up with concepts on how we were going to come up with a full length project. I've been on a couple of his other projects as a feature. He's been on mine as a producer, but we wanted to like give people that hip hop feel of like a MF Doom and Mad Lib or, you know, Static Selector and every artist he works with just kind of give that hip hop. Uh, he's the producer, I'm the rapper feel. Mm -hmm. And so we had a couple of ideas. Um, just on how we were gonna roll out a group of music we had. And we were like, you know what? Um, let's see how we can represent how, you know, we, we wanna see this music as a sport almost. And that's something that we both work with on a, a group project that we have called National Collegiate Entertainers Groups. So it's kind of like the NCAA of entertainment. We were like, yo, let's, let's just brand this thing and go hard and show people that we're here to kind of like healthily compete when it comes to music and we want to show that we got beats we got bars we got what you're looking for mm -hmm. hey g what about you you know what about the you know coming into the project i mean well if you guys are competing like, i mean who's winning that i guess is the question <laughs> i mean who i mean so i guess coming into this project like zay was saying like we've been we've been collaborating for a minute now but this project has been a long time coming honestly like uh I would say like three years we've been working on because some of the tracks on the project are three years old mm -hmm. or maybe even pre-pandemic, right? So it's like, uh, like we really wanted to elevate ourselves with this project. And, you know, when Zay told me, he was like, yo, let's drop this. Um, and he's like, it kind of has this like sports feel to it. And like, it, it clicked with, it clicked with me really, you know? Um, and like, you know, during March, like the whole, and we were influenced by Future too, like Future's March Madness and stuff. Sure. And so, like, ex yes, sir. And we we would like listen to that in the studio all the time. And so, that's like one of my favorite Future songs. And so when he brought the idea, it just clicked immediately. I was like, "Yo, <laughs> you onto something." And so I guess competition in the sense of um, this us elevating each other, not exactly like competing with each other. We're just elevating each other to the next level. I like, sure. it. I like it. Now you, you mentioned you guys have, you know, kind of collaborated back before this project. So for each of you guys, you know, what is the origin story, you know, look like to getting into, uh, getting into music? Like, you know, we'll start with you, Zay, and then we'll go down uh, to AG, but for you, sure. how'd you get into this? So, um, uh, secrets, I, I, I guess I would be what you call an industry kid. Um, my parents were in the industry. My mom was a project manager. Um, she worked in IT, but by way of also marketing for a lot of companies. Um, and then my dad, he was into like uh, artist management and development. He used to work with an old Atlanta group called Ghetto Mafia. Mm -hmm. And um, just from there, he was able to be around the environment of hip hop in its prime in the 90s and 80s. And so, of course, you know, he, he wanted to instill that kind of like culture into me. And once he saw that I could carry a tune, play an instrument and, you know, give a little rap, he was like, yeah, let's cultivate something here. And so um, I've kind of been trained on music all my life. I uh, was in marching band, played drums, I played piano, played guitar. Um, and as I was getting into high school, I was like, okay, what do I want to do as a career? Am I going to go, you know, full marching band or do I want to find another way in music? Uh, I took a music production class. And in there, I was really able to understand how to navigate music industry more, understand the terms, lingo and stuff. And around the time I was headed towards college, 
is when I met I met my mentor, who is now my manager, uh, DJ Rosteru. And he was also at the time managing Dwelle and Fife Dog from a tribe called Quest. And so he kind of um, took up the mantle in being like a mentor and helping groom me as the artist I am today. And along the way, I was just looking for dope production, you know, looking for who had different sounds, different vibes to just push me as far as a lyricist. And that's when I met AG. Well, AG, what about you? You know, it sounds like you're you, you're a lot on the producing side, but you know, we'll, we'll get behind the mic every now and then. Like, talk talk about your origin <laughs> origin into this uh, into this business, man. Oh, uh, so. I kind of been doing music my whole life, but I'm I'm kind of the opposite of Zay when it comes to I don't have any connections. I don't have any family in the music industry. I was literally I'm the first person in my family to do something like this. Um, so it's like it's definitely like a lot on my shoulders, just just learning everything and stuff. But I kind of I kind of been making music my entire life. You know, I I would say since kindergarten. It's crazy, like. <laughs> I used to do like beatboxing, <laughs> like stuff like that. And um, uh, we was in like a like a rap group in elementary school. <laughs> and so it was like I, I I did the beatboxing and my homie would rap over it, stuff like that. Um, and then like fast forward to middle school is when I was like getting into like um like playing an instrument. So I play saxophone. And so I got into saxophone playing like right, I would say like was middle school what is that like uh sixth grade something like mm-hmm. that and so that's really what uh like brought my love for music and it was my older brother who used to put me on like mixtapes and and we would be <laughs> we'd be listening in his like old uh, old school camry where the ac and the heating never worked we had to roll <laughs> down the windows all the time bro uh, and so like it, we would listen to old types of music kanye jeezy ti like that's what i grew up with and um so that was that was like when I was like, yo, when I heard Kanye's music, when I heard T.I.'s music, I was like, I want to do that. And so that was like that was really what got me into production. And so one of my homies told me, uh, gave me what was it called? FL Studio. And so I was like, he gave me FL 11. And, you know, back then everything was like cracked, you know, <laughs> everything. We didn't buy nothing back then. We just <laughs> we just cracked everything. So. Yeah, and so he brought that over, loaded on the laptop, and then I just taught myself everything, looked at YouTube videos, everything. And so, you know, I say I didn't really take it seriously until maybe end of high school when I was about to graduate, and I started working with, like, some local rappers and stuff. Um, But it wasn't until I got to Georgia State, um, which is where, you know, what Zay was talking about, National CEG, we started the first chapter at Georgia State. And so technically I'm one of the co-founders of that organization, but it, you know, long story short, I met a bunch of people, including Zay at Georgia state and, you know, the rest is history. We've just been working. It's been a, you know, grinding since then. I love it. I love it. You know, you guys have a, you know, rich instrument background. It sounds like if, if, you know, if, Hey, we, we want to take a break from rapping, we could, we could form some kind of jazz group or something <laughs> where we could go in and, and we were versatile. I'm ready. That's crazy. You say that. Cause Zay and I had the same conversation, <laughs> a jazz group, man. That's crazy. On some uh, Mac Miller, or Larry Fisherman, you know, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. Well, well, let's kind of talk, you know, let's you know get back on the, you know, the current music. I mean, some of the, yeah, I, I ran through some of the tracks on, on March Madness, you know, a couple that you know stuck out to me barely on you know one of those you know really kind of you know got out to me so you know talk yeah. about you know y'all's process when you're in the studio is it you know we've are we're, we're listening we're going to create the beat first and then make the lyrics or like is it you know lyrics first then we're going to put the beat between it you know melody what you know there's a lot of different ways to, to skin the cat there but like how do you how do you guys handle that uh in the studio when you're creating um you know, this uh this project mm um so i guess i'll go first so it's like uh so zay he he knows how to produce right and so i'm a producer and like we we kind of always had that chemistry when we came together like he would start the beat and he you know maybe he adds like 808 or maybe he adds a melody 
And then, you know, me, I'll come in, I'll have like hi-hat or snare or maybe vice versa. I'll do the 808 and he'll do the melody or something like that. And so I don't know. It's like, um, it's like, you know how they talk about how like twins like complete each other's sentences or like siblings complete each other. Like Zay, like that's my brother. So like that's it. We, like, we complete each other's sentences when it comes to music. Right. And so I guess in terms of like um, the processes, it really could go either way. You know what I'm saying? But Zay going into the artist mode and like me taking the production duties, like I, when it comes to making beats, like I really like to start with like synths, like darker instruments, and then I'll work my way into other stuff. Um, I also like sampling, you know, like the last track on the album has like a really dope chop sample on it. Um, so I usually like to start with melody, but um, I guess certain tracks I may use, start with the drums first, you know. For sure. And that I was going to say, it's really um, unique because like just, for example, with the five tracks on here, each track was approached differently. Mm -hmm. um, for example, with Barely On, I had recorded that with another producer and we decided that it wasn't quite the, the vibe. Um, as far as what he had produced and um, what I laid down, they didn't quite marry. And so I just had the acapella sitting for like a year and a half and I found it and I was like, hey, G, bro, I feel like you could do something with this. Um, let me know. And as soon as I sent it, I want to say like an hour later, he sent back the full song. And it was like, like almost like the EDM process where he took the acapella <laughs> and was able to construct yeah. a whole piece around it. And um, I know we did that for Ropes as well. It was the same way where he was able to construct a piece around just vocals and make it the song that it was. Um, whereas stuff like, I know for Why Not, that was a track that he had sent and I just, I, I felt it. And I was able to just write a whole song to it. And there was actually uh, three verses of just me on there originally. But then I was like, nah, I really wanna be able to, um, you know, showcase AG's beats with not just me, but other artists that I work with. And so I was fortunate enough to get I-47 and Sick Flow on there. And these are like two hip hop legends, man. When y'all get the time, please look them up. But two hip hop legends and um, having them on there and we even were able to reproduce some of the stuff to have them fit and make it sound like people are, you know, featuring and introducing on the track. Uh, that was another way that we were able to work. Now, I thought that was really unique. I had never worked that way before. Um, it was just a, a very creative and collective process, I would say. And it taught us that there's no cookie cutter way. You don't have to do it a specific way, but just like, when you're looking for that vibe and it finds you, you can just follow the path. Yes, sir. I like it. I like it. Now, you know, it sounds like you guys spend a lot of time in the studio. You know, is there is there a part of this that you, you translate over as you're in the studio, you think about the live show and you think about how, how are we going to do it live? What do we, you know, what do we want to get out of that? You know, because I think, you know, it's especially with rap, it's tougher, you know, to translate what you do in the studio sometimes into that live show. So, Talk about how you guys handle that, you know, as you guys plan on, you know, if you are going to do a tour or something like that, like how do you plan in the studio for that live and then, you know, translate it into something that, um, you know, you're proud of on that, on that live set stage? For sure. Um, I guess I'll go first on this one. So one of the cheat codes of being a part of this organization, um, INSEG, they do artist development. Mm -hmm. And so... I had music out for a while, just being, um, you know, a dabbler within just recording myself. But at the same time, there was a moment where I knew I had to take it serious as a profession. And I took all that music down that I was sharing with the world. I was like, you know, so new to streaming. I thought it like, yo, let me just upload this and see if people like it. But once I got with NSEG, I was like, yo, I really want to approach this professionally and show people my best work. And so I started with artist development and um, I was performing while I had no music out um, and really just learning my craft on stage and live first. And then I took the energy from live and then I went to the studio. So by the time that I'm recording it, I'm recording it just like I performed. I'm recording it with the performance in mind. So it's almost like an in-studio performance for me. And um, I know for me, that's, it, it, so it's almost like reverse. I think about the live show before I even think about recording the song. 
Hey, Jude, what about you? Um, so like I'm I'm not really a performer, I would say, but I would like like um, you know, like I've DJed stuff before, but it like I wouldn't even call myself a DJ like that. But when it comes to um making music, I do definitely I see visuals before I even make the track. So it's like, you know, like a track like uh, Control ATL Delete, which is like uh, the fourth track on the project. Like that song, um, when we when I was cutting up the sample, like I was like, you know, an acapella would go perfect over this. And it's like live, you can perform that acapella, right? Like without the beat, you can cut off the beat. And then like maybe a little bit later, like he say, some, he say something and then you drop the beat in, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like that type of stuff and knowing like um it's 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 the simple things, right? It's like the it's the minimalistic things that you can do in a live performance that really take it to the next level, you know? Like so I would I would say like specific things like that. Gotcha. Now for you guys, like, you know, is there a tour, you know, tour together individually? What is that, you know, kind of you know, is there a plan to do that for for specifically? You know, I know a lot of our artists we talk to they tour for specific albums, or is this is that going to be a standalone and then we'll come out and, and do a tour later? Or you know, what does that kind of live you know aspect look like? Uh, you know, moving forward. So um, we actually have a show tomorrow oh. for this project. Um, a- I guess you could call it like a like a debut show for it, but it's going to be a virtual concert with uh, the program we're talking about, Inseg. And um, I'm doing their halftime show for their like music competition. And so right now, that's kind of like just been the first booking and the, the first leg run of um, how far we've reached. But if we were able to partner with an agency that wants to take the whole show on tour, you know, from seeing what they see at the virtual live, then I'd love to. I know um, right now I'm preparing with my team with uh, DJ Rasarut and um, he has a camp called Smoking Needles. Um, so after Fife Dog passed, he kind of left a legacy behind to groom artists and get us out there. So um, I'm working on a debut album with them. And that's where I want to be able to take all this music that I've been collecting with the guys on tour so that I could have an extended set beyond just the album. But I could do a good 45 minutes to an hour, two hours if I want. But um, that's probably where people are going to get to see it the most, because I'll be able to have a set where I'm performing multiple projects within the set. Yeah. No, definitely a tour. That's definitely something we want to do in the future. Like that's, that's, that, we've talked about that before. Um, we even talked about music festivals, putting on our, putting on our own festival, you know, something like doing something for the city. Like that's, that's in the plans. Definitely. Gotcha. You know, you know, obviously a little bit different, you know, uh, AG, would you would you do you know a, like a DJ set or you know something along those lines or you know like get into that um, you know kind of I, I always look at it like this. I have another buddy who's a producer. Uh, his name is A One mm-hmm. Devin. Yeah, and, you know he he played football with me at Mercer, so I, I, I joke with him every now and then. I'm like, bro, you need to get like a, a mascot head and just start making beats <laughs> and like we can see how we can get. Let's see how, how far we can take this thing, man. I mean, come on. So. Yeah. It, any any no, type of uh, any type of producing in, in in that in manner that you'd be open to or yeah you know, so like it, it's crazy you say that because um you know so I've like I've I've done like small DJ events like here and there but like I don't know actually how to DJ but what I've discovered is that DJing has become so um like there's there's a low barrier of entry right so it's like people will create whole sets. Right. And they'll just like stand behind the computer and do something like that. So I don't know if I really want to do something like that. But if I like you were talking about live beat making, that's something like I do want to get into, um, you know, like because Akai has some like dope um, like beat making machines, you know, Roland, of course, the classic and like that stuff I, I, I definitely want to get into. So like it, it's something like I've definitely thought of. It's just something. um that I'm not complete, I haven't completely, um, I guess, worked on yet. But it's definitely something like I want to get into. I can see it too. Like mm. some beats, uh, A rap music, the way they do it. I, I can yeah. see what you're talking about. Yeah, no, I definitely, bro. I like it. I like it, guys. Well, 
you know, I want to want to get into you know Pete Peterson's party pack of questions here. The Twenty <laughs> questions right in a row, really hammering it to you. Rapid fire. We're gonna go for sake of we'll go Zay because you're on the you're on my like this way for me. So we'll go okay. Zay first, then AG. Um, so it's gonna go real quick. I'm gonna be fast now. All right, so y'all be okay. ready on your toes. Let's go here. I'm ready. Cake <laughs> or pie? Pie. Definitely pie. Mm-hmm. That's good. You pie? Yeah. Uh, so I didn't make it, I didn't make it clear. Nah. You all, y'all been answering. Oh, yeah, all no, no. Sorry. 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 Definitely, definitely. Nah, I understand. <laughs> no, I'm definitely going for pie. I'm a southern boy, bro. Okay. <laughs> salad or soup? I should say salad, but I'm going to have to go with soup. Damn, bro. I don't know, bro. <laughs> so I ate some really good soup the other day. The Olive Garden, I mean, sorry, not soup, a uh, salad the other day. The Olive Garden salad, man, this stuff is amazing. I had to go with salad, bro. He's going with salad. I like it. <laughs> Sunrise or sunsets? What are you two seeing more of these days? Mm. Sunrise. Sunrise. I've been, I've been up. I've been up and at it. Sunrise. <laughs> man, uh, damn. Yeah, no, I'll be up early, so I'd say sunrise. Okay. Would you rather hit a home run or score a touchdown? Home run. Home run, man. <laughs> Georgia Braves, man. Home run. Georgia, Atlanta Braves. Man, so no, I'm a bigger, I'm a bigger Falcons fan. So I'm wearing a Falcons okay. right now. But uh and so I gotta say touchdown. I like it. I like it. Night in or night out, what do you guys have more of? Mm. Mm. You know what? In our field, I'm gonna say night out. Realistically, <laughs> night out. <laughs> Man, damn. I don't know. I'm a I'm a night in type of person. Like I can I can do that night out stuff, but I'm I'm more night in type of person. Okay. You know? okay. All right. When you do go out and your jam comes on at the party you're at, are you more likely to do the robot or the worm? <laughs> you know oh. what? I've actually done the worm at a party, so I'm gonna have to say the worm. I like it. There you go, man. I'm I'm going with robot, bro, because I've actually done the robot. I used to do that pop that pop locking like <laughs> the pop lock. Go ahead. There it is. All right, guac or queso? Mm, queso, 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 yeah, spinach, okay. queso. <laughs> at that. Okay. Right. No, that right. queso, queso is the one, bro. Queso with jalapenos. That's the that's the one right there. All right, all right. A little spice, I like it. Waffles or pancakes? Waffle House. <laughs> Yo, baby, waffles. You know, yeah, I definitely waffles, hands down. I like it. I like it. Coffee or tea with those waffles? Mm. Mm. I've been more tea lately, actually. I used to be a coffee addict. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking coffee. I don't think I've drank I've drunk coffee in a year now. Okay. Yeah, no, uh I, I was never into coffee. I gotta go with tea. Okay, I'll tea. I like it. Dogs or cats? <laughs> dogs. <laughs> dogs. Dogs. Yes, sir. Dogs. All right, we're all dogs. We're all dogs. I like it. <laughs> Ninja or pirate? What do you more like? Ninja. <laughs> 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 no so like i gotta pick ninja because like i i I remember reading about the sengoku period in japan and like ninjas like that's when ninjas were big and so like that's that's i always think about that so no ninjas we made, we made nova happy over pirate <laughs> <laughs> oh man i mean so first time ever doing that asking that question somebody's busted out the sengoku the sengoku period in yeah, Japan so and known exactly when the ninjas were available. I love it. I love oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's your guy. He's a historian. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Gatorade or Powerade? Powerade. Powerade. And I don't even know why. Because I could go either or, but for some reason I pick out Powerade more. Yeah, no, I think I gotta go with Gatorade. I I drank way more way more Gatorade back in high school. Way more Gatorade. Okay. Toast or bagels in the morning? <laughs> That's actually a really difficult one. 
I'm going to tell you the truth. I, I don't care that I eat toast more. I prefer bagels. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I might have to go with bagel because I literally ate a bagel today. I literally yeah. jealous. <laughs> chips or pretzels? Mm. I'm going to go with chips. Go with chips, you got more flavor options. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, no, those, those, those barbecue Lay's chips, that, that's the one right there. Okay, all right. Fries or tots? Mmm. Damn, bro. Fries. Fries. Because you can have them in different forms. Damn. Um, yeah, I mean, damn. What and any this? other form of tater tot is a hash brown. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you're right about that. You're right about that. I'm going to have to go with, I'm, I'm actually going to go with tater tots. All right. Tater tots. When you guys sit down after a long day, TV show or movie to help you unwind? TV show. TV show. You yeah. actually get a longer movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, for, for me, like, I definitely got to be in a mood to watch a movie. Like, TV shows, like, those, like, 30 minutes, like, uh, sitcoms and stuff. Like, that's definitely, just put that on. I like it. Are aliens real? Yes. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aliens gotta be real, man. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Make the universe way more interesting. Is Bigfoot real? I don't know if that's the politically correct term for him, but yes. <laughs> I think... Has Bigfoot been canceled? Am I not allowed to say Bigfoot? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> what do you mean, bro? Because, <laughs> like, are, are, it, didn't they, like, prove Bigfoot was, like, a Yeti or something? But Yeti's not real either, bro. No, nah, Yeti's <laughs> real. Yetis are definitely real. <laughs> okay, so I mean, you're, you're going Bigfoot in the snow real, but Bigfoot in the, the regular forest, not yeah, real. Exactly. It's crazy. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. All right. Is love at first sight real? Love at first sight. For hmm. food. <laughs> for food, no. <laughs> not for people. That's for food. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We haven't had that answer either. I mean, we've had like a bunch of people go, yeah, lust at first sight is real, but like love at first sight for food is real. I love that. <laughs> I've been getting you hungry the whole entire list. And then I go exactly. with the love at first sight. And most people are like, well, that would have changed up. And they're like, yeah, for food, bro. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Definitely. I love it. Yeah. I, love no, it for food. I don't think it exists. Like it, it's just impossible. You can't just fall in love with someone immediately. I feel like that's a, uh, that's kind of a, a crazy way to look at it. I like it. I like it. All right. And, and for both of you guys, and the final question of Pete Peterson's party pack of questions, two artists each. So two artists each that we ought to check out that we don't know about uh, from each of you guys. So it could be your friends, could be people in y'all's, uh, y'all's group at, at Georgia State. Um, so who are two people that we ought to check out from each of you guys that we, uh, that we need to look up? Mm. You want to go first, AG? I always go blank when someone asks me recommendations. Damn. Um, who's a dope artist? Who have I been listening to recently? Damn, I can't even think. You gotta go, Zay. I can't even think. I gotta think about it. We can go one and one if that if we need to. We, I don't want to call it two. One and one. Let's go. I got. I got two. I got two for sure. Uh, I'm gonna say, Nix. My boy Nix, you spell it N I C X. Nix, um, he's about to drop an album next month. It's gonna be amazing. He's been doing music for a minute, man. Like he's a legend in Cleveland. Um, so I have to say him, and definitely, although we probably already know who he is, but he had Atlanta legend, and he's dropping on Friday. I'm gonna say my boy Black. Black yes, sir. Black. Black. He's black. <laughs> mm. I love it. Okay. So actually, no, I just thought of, I just thought of two. So the first one would be one, my homie Kim the Third in house ATL, bro. That man been going hard. He's been dropping like freestyles all the time. Um, yeah, he's just been rapping in his car. He, he's going crazy. So no, definitely check out Kim the Third. Um, and the second person I would say, like, uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta support my, 
my Indian people. So like, uh, I would say Raf's Apparel. He's like this uh, Punjabi artist, and he's 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 hard, bro. And he he uh you know he he mixes like hip hop with Punjabi music, and it's like the um, it's an amazing mix. Uh, so you know, definitely check out you know Raf's Apparel. He's he's hard. Okay, all right. So I got Nix N I C X from Cleveland. Album coming out Friday. Six lakhs. Or- yeah, yeah, that's who's got the album Friday. <laughs> he uh, said six, six black, six black, six black, black, six, six black. black. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. I, I, I gotta spell it out, or else I don't, I know how to look it up. Six, <laughs> six L A L A L A C K, and then I got Ken the third, K E N the third. Oh no, K-E-N Kim three. the third. Kim, Kim the th- yes sir, Kim the third. K I M. All right, and then Rafe Zapata, which is R A F. E Z A P E R A. Uh, so that's close. It's R A F space uh S A P E R R A. So yeah, two R's. All right, I like yes, it. I like it. Got to get it right. Got to get it right. Yes, sir. We got survived the Pete Peterson party pack of questions. <laughs> you know, I'm glad we could get that going. Oh, Obviously, perfect. guys, go go listen to AG Dynasty. Go listen to Zay because. Go listen to them together on March Madness out right now, this second. March Anytime Madness. you're listening to this, um, okay. you might not, you, know, you may not hear this till April, but it's going to be, a, but, but they got March Madness still going on. Yeah, exactly. The final four. The final four we'll have a, final, now, let's go. My bracket is busted already. So it, it <laughs> don't, don't even matter, bro. It doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. I had, I had, we had some, had some unfortunate things going on last, last weekend, <laughs> but, um, exactly. Appreciate you guys coming on. You know, excited to you know again follow you guys, see see where things you know come from, and trying you know see what trajectory we get on, and and see, excited to you know hear new releases and all that good stuff coming. Anything else you want to shout out? You know, um, you know to the people for for to follow you guys. Oh Man. yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Zay. I was saying just you know Zay because on everything Z A Y B C U Z Y because. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, definitely follow me. Uh, AG Dynasty on IG, um, AG Dynasty HDL on uh, Twitter. Um, I also got a TikTok, you know, I post some of my beats on there. That's AG Dynasty. So, yeah, just you know, follow me. Um, definitely check out my tracks. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate ND DM, uh, uh, DMB, ND DMB. So, I appreciate it all. Yeah. Um, you know, and definitely like let me let me know when the interview drops. I definitely want to like you know tag y'all, you know support y'all. You know, yeah, I appreciate, appreciate it for sure. Yes, sure. We'll get that. We'll get that going. Yeah, thank you guys. Yes, sir, man. Much appreciated. Yes, sir.